Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria. And guys, it's time for some tart. You guys requested it, you said, hey, Paige, they're dropping some stuff. We wanna know if it's any good or is it a gimmick? And I was like, girl, I'm here for you. Let's test it out and let's see. So I went ahead and I have gathered some of their products and we're gonna dive in to the first one, which is actually a moisturizer. And I did already put this on my face and I have some information. So where we're going to start is on the website because I did purchase all of these from Ulta. And um, thank God I did because I'll tell you right now, they're returnable. Mm -hmm. um, this first one here is the Double Duty Beauty First Step Prep Moisturizer Reset Cream. Wow, that's a mouthful. It says, whip it real good with the... <laughs> I can't. It says, whip it real good with this vegan whipped face moisturizer. Tarte's multitasking Double Duty Beauty First Step Prep Moisturizer Reset Cream does all the things. And it also has the longest damn title in the world. It hydrates the skin, preps for primer and makeup application, but never leaves your skin feeling heavy or sticky. Now this is $35 for one fluid ounce, and it's basically a regular cream moisturizer. And I am used to working more with gels, um, water gels, things of that nature, Neutrogena, Murid, um, the Tatcha, uh, what is that? Tatcha water, water moisturizer, water something. The one from Tatcha. There's a lot of that gel consistency and because I'm normal to oily skin, that's typically what I go towards because it really settles into the skin and doesn't argue with the oils that are already on my skin. However, I wanted to test this out because it did have a couple claims in there that I thought were really cool. So I picked it up and as you guys saw, I already applied it to the skin and I actually let this sit on my skin for a while, like 20 to 30 minutes, which is a long time. Typically when I let stuff sink into the skin, normal only like 10 to 15 minutes and I'm good to go because after I cleanse my skin, um, the moisturizer just sinks in very nicely and it just grabs it and we're good to go. It's locked in. And this sat down on my skin for a while and I was like, um, I went like this. That's all I did. Boom. Like one of these. And I was like, this is effing greasy. What is going on? So I went ahead and I actually took a napkin and I blotted off my face. And as you guys can see, she was gross. There was so much of this like oil film situation that just like levitated on my skin. Didn't sink in. It was gross. Now after blotting off my skin, I will say that it was good to go after that. I went ahead, touched it. Everything felt smooth. There was no more like residual nasty on the skin. There was no residual oil or texture or pilling or anything like that. So the main issue for me is that it did levitate and like leave that film on the skin. So I'm not a big fan of this personally. I will probably return it um, just because it doesn't sink in as nicely as I need it to and that being said I do use creams and night creams and things of that nature so I don't want you guys to think that like I'm not used to using them or I just haven't used them or whatever because I have used several I actually am using the one from fresh the rose cream it's a really thick night cream and even that one for a thick ass beautiful sexy sultry night cream when it goes on my face like an hour or two later I don't have like these big patches of surface oil all over my skin so it isn't something where I'm not used to it. It isn't something where I just haven't experienced it. This is very strictly, in my opinion, something with the product and the way that for some reason it just is not completely absorbing. And like I said, not the first time I've experienced it with a product, but I don't like it and it doesn't settle into the skin nice enough. But if you do have dry skin, it might be something to consider because as we all know, drier skin can absorb a little bit more. So that might work. You may still have an issue with residual oil. I'm not sure. Um, I just think that for Tarte, they have so many other amazing things that we could focus on that this isn't my favorite. Now, I do love their maracuja oil they came out with. That stuff is pretty nice. I find it to be a little heavier on the face, but it's really nice in the hair. So, you know, there are things here and there that you can kind of tweak how you use them, why you use them. This just, I don't think is one of the things that I would choose to use either at night or in the morning. So for me, this was a pass. So from there, I moved on to primers and I did pick up two of them per your guys' request. And the first one I'll get into here is the Double Duty Beauty Base tape hydrating primer and this is a very nice thin liquidy primer and in the Alta description it says prep yourself before you perfect yourself turn up the base with this vegan coconut priming serum that hydrates your skin for 12 hours this rich yet lightweight makeup magnet is infused with a blend of coconut and botanicals to help nourish and smooth the skin's appearance and then from there it just goes on to talk more about the people the study they did that used it and all of those statistics which are boring and we're not going to get into them so I did go ahead I applied that 
that to this half of my face as you saw and I don't hate it I can definitely tell that it is on the hydrating side just something that I'm gonna throw out there this actually is settling into my skin nicer than the moisturizer did it's not leaving any weird like film it's not leaving an oil residue nothing like that it's just good and soaked in I don't feel anything it's not sticky or tacky or anything like that it really just soaked in nicely um, it's similar in consistency to the primerizer from Smashbox at this moment I still like that one more because it has less of an oil factor than this one but this is still working and settling down nicely so far and I wanted to give both of these primers a chance to like sink and settle in that's why I applied them off of camera so next up we have this guy right here this one was so requested from you guys this is the Tarte double duty beauty shape tape pore and primer balm it is $25 versus the other primer which was 30 and in the description it says fine lines pores never heard of them Tarte's double duty beauty shape tape pore and prime balm is vegan can't believe it's not silk primer that makes makeup glide on smoother and last longer than Mondays plus it comes in an on-the-go compact with a sponge it has a creamy lightweight formula blends easily onto skin to blur and smooth imperfections helps control oil to keep your foundation looking flawless all day long formulated with vitamin E to help keep skin nourished and then it goes on to talk about again the case studies and things of that nature so the description being what it is I think the first thing I'm gonna dive into is this is not Tatcha Silk Canvas do not purchase this if you think it's going to be similar because it is not this feels very similar in touch feel consistency everything to that regard as their clean slate timeless smoothing primer which this one if you recall when I had super super oily skin I actually was not a big fan of this primer I felt like it went on it didn't do much of anything and it made my skin even more slippery and more oily and that's just the consistency of it it's supposed to be pore filling and all these things but it just never did it for me I know a lot of people love this primer and maybe now I would love it again now that I'm like more on the normal side of oily but for me this was a pass and so when I went in and I was playing with this new primer I was like oh my god is this literally the same thing it feels almost identical it's just thinner in like the viscosity the actual thickness of it is a little thinner but in my opinion that's the only difference so then I went in and I was like okay what is that it's like a silicone dimethicone there's something in there that's giving it that slip and feel and sure as shit if I pull up the boxes for both of these products which I'm weird and I've always kept this one in the box I purchased it in and the ingredients on that one is the second ingredient for the clean slate primer is dimethicone and then the pore and prime balm the first ingredient is dimethicone so I think that that's probably what that slip is it is primarily that same slippery situation and then just for comparison on the Tatcha Silk canvas site I just pulled up the ingredient list and dimethicone is like 13th on the list so if that gives you any indication as far as the slip difference and how this one feels I would say the Tatcha one just doesn't have as much of a to it as those ones do it goes on and it's a lot thicker and I really have to like work and press it into the pores which I prefer because I would rather work it in myself than have it be so slippery because that slipperiness is usually a concentrated amount of dimethicone which works against the oily on my skin so anyways all of that aside that's just a little comparison if you were looking at both I have applied both they've been setting here for a while and I am ready to dive into some foundation now as far as they both feel um, they both feel pretty good I don't feel any like residual oils or anything on either side which is nice um, I will say this side the side with the uh, pore balm feels a little bit more um oily up near my nose area already and the hydrated side doesn't the hydrated side actually just feels nice and even which is cool now for foundation I'm gonna be going in with something I've been using a lot lately and testing out this is the new Dior forever um, as you guys know if you're new here girl there's so much information on these on this channel I did a full video of just this one this is the new formulated Dior forever I will link that up here I also did a full video of the Dior forever skin glow option which is the new glow and I will link that one up here as well so I'm going to be going in with this because it's buildable to about a medium coverage. So there will be some red and discoloration that still peaks out, which is good. I want that because we're also going to be going in with the Shape Tape Powder Foundation. And this is what I'm going to use to set the face. So this will give us a good feel for how much there is as far as coverage, how it sits on the skin, how it sets in. And I just think it'll be the best option because of the coverage and all that. So we are going to dive in with this here in a second. Now I am taking this in the shade 0N, pressing it in with my 
my Real Techniques sponge, and I'll probably just go ahead and skip this part over for you guys because it's not super important, but I'm going to build this up maybe one to one and a half ish layers. I don't want to build up a ton of coverage because I want to be able to see the coverage of that Shape Tape Powder Foundation, but I also don't want to go in and with without enough, you know what I mean? So I'm going to just apply this and uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I have you guys good and zoomed in and I'm just kind of giving myself like a once over in like the pore department and it actually looks pretty nice on both sides which isn't uncommon for Dior but normally I do have a little bit of raised bumpage on both sides and I'm seeing this side I think looks a little bit nicer the side with the balm. So I guess that's a good thing. The hydrated side is looking nice and fresh, but it doesn't look overly dewy. It doesn't look crazy shiny or anything, which is good. So I think we're ready to use some powders. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is set my under eye, which I'm going to do with my Maybelline Fit Me because that has nothing to do with uh, the Shape Tape powder. And I don't think I would want a heavy ass foundation powder under my eye. So I'm just going to use my little Sigma P82 brush here and set my under eye. But first I'm patting out these damn creases because girl, got creases for days. Okay, I went ahead, I did my under eye, and I set the Hulk because, girl, he was one creasy-ass monster, and it is time to move on to the powder. So, this is the Double Duty Beauty Shape Tape Pressed Powder. It is $32. This vegan powder player has medium buildable coverage and shows a little extra love to combination and oily skin peeps. So, the basic benefits are helps cover redness, hyperpigmentation, and blemishes without looking cakey or dry. It helps make makeup last for up to 12 hours, and it helps soften the appearance of fine lines and pores. So, then you move on to the how-to-use section and it says you pick up powder with a fluffy brush and apply in circular motions for a creamy and even complexion. All right, so moving on from there, I picked this up in the shade 10N, which is fair neutral, and it doesn't look like a bad color. I think it'll work out to set my face. However, um, we're gonna talk real quick about the awful shade range. This was released in 15 colors. At first I was like, okay, maybe this doesn't have an awful shade range. Like this right here is the deepest one on the Alta website. There are no swatches or anything for me to go off of. But then as I was scrolling through the 15, colors, I noticed right in the dead center, somebody thought this would be a good color. Do you see that Cheeto color that they came out with? Boy, that's nice. And I just don't understand how we can have a foundation powder that goes from neutral to pinky undertones to Dorito undertones. Like, I don't understand that. Wow. So that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to my face. And I think the way that I want to apply this just based on this Dior foundation is in lighter amounts because lately I've been loving less powder. It's been working really well for me. So I did go ahead and just let this whole moment kind of sink and settle into the skin. Everything is looking pretty good on top of both those primers. And I'm just going to grab this giant brush right here, which is the It Cosmetics something brush. Oh, 211 all over powder. And I'm going to use this brush to just kind of get in here, do one of these and get a good amount of product. And we're going to shake her off and then just apply very lightly. And I've actually been really loving setting my makeup like this lately, uh, just because I love taking a light amount of a powder dusting it all over. I feel like it's not too much. It doesn't get super cakey, which is great. And this way too, if you go in with like a powder foundation, you can still gain some coverage, which is nice. So it's a good way to go in and get coverage, get a light dusting of powder and still set your foundation. So as long as this works out, this could be a good option. Now I'm getting a little bit of coverage through here, but not a ton. I'm also not building it up a lot. So just something to keep in mind, this is probably more on the light to medium scale for powder foundations. Um, but it's actually going on really nice. Like, it's pressing into the skin very nicely. Now, I do want to throw something out there that I just noticed. I read the back of the container, and it says Shape Tape Powder Foundation. I read this container, and it says Shape Tape Powder Foundation. I go to the Ulta website, and it says Shape Tape Pressed Powder. So, that's interesting. Nowhere down in, like, the description does it say anything about this being a foundation. So, I'm not sure how they're trying to market this. If they're trying to say it's a foundation, say it's a powder. Some people are more apt to try a powder if they just call it a powder versus a foundation. So, maybe that's where it's at. But just so you know, all the packaging says foundation, but the internet does not say foundation. So, just something if you were wondering. Now, I'm going to move on. Set my double chin. You just got to respect the double chin, you know. She wore down there. She's working hard for all them chips, them Doritos, that ice cream, <laughs> the Ben and Jerry's. God, I love Ben and Jerry's. Guys, I just took this like over my lip region and this feels really nice on the lips. It's like a very soft powder. Oh, like very soft, very silky. 
I'm kind of loving the feel of it. So, so far, everything is setting very nicely. Again, I wouldn't say that I got any like extra coverage or anything going on over here, but I do think it's just a plain pressed powder. This is working very nicely into the skin. Like it's setting very nice. I didn't go in with a ton and you can actually tell because of the marks that are on the foundation. Like a lot of them are still there. So I didn't go in with a heavy amount, but just in touching this, it is a very nice finely milled powder. It's not finely milled like to the hourglass finely milled standpoint, but this is a very nice silky consistency that I quite enjoy at the moment. Wow. And it feels really satisfying too. It feels like velvet when you stick your finger in the pan. Anyways, okay guys, I'm going to run ahead, finish up the rest of my face. I have some other videos to shoot and I think we're going to do a wear test with this, not just for the primers, but also for this powder. I want to see if it gets cakey or weird. I want to see if maybe I can do a retouch or a touch up with it throughout the day because one of the things it said on the website is that this is great for touch ups. It said in the how to use that for touch ups on the go, lightly press dr a dry sponge into the powder, apply to troubled areas for a bright and flawless complexion. So we're going to kind of check all the areas of this, keep checking boxes and see what we think of the powder. And yeah, I'll be right back. Okay guys. So it has been a minute since I checked on with you and here's why I was out kind of doing the day and I was going to just check back on afterwards and my skin looked fine. Like there wasn't anything to it. So I moved on throughout the day and I started working on other things. And so at this point now it's been about five hours and here's what I'm noticing. My face looks very broke up and for this Dior foundation that's very out of character. Like I'm seeing a lot of breakage and cracking on the side of my nose that I don't typically see and I'm seeing a lot of it around my mouth as well. So I'm assuming that would be like a primer situation. But the reason I say all of this is because I thought it would be a good time for us to take this powder and maybe freshen up our face and see if it works for that. So with the powder you actually flip it up and they give you that dry little sponge. So I thought we would go through and kind of patch ourselves up a little bit with this. Now normally I would go through and remove a little bit of the oil but I'm not going to because I think if I try to remove it it's going to just straight up remove my foundation. So I'm just going to grab this little powder puff, grab some product and I'm going to lightly touch up around like the nose area, see if I can remove a little bit of that shine and maybe work. I'm sorry, what just happened? Oh my, oh my God, guys, can I just interject with, I have never had a powder do that. Like when my skin is oily, I press it in with a sponge all the time and it never co like sticks together like that. Okay. So I'm going to grab a big old fluffy brush instead, and we're going to lightly tap this onto our face. Let's use this brush. It's the nice little BH number three brush. It has a very light taper to it. We're just going to get a little bit of powder on it, <laughs> tap it off, and we're going to try and add a little bit of rejuvenation. So I'm just really going to re-mattify this whole area with a brush. Oh, this is working much better. Okay, definitely do this part with a brush. Huh. Wow, it's actually looking really nice. I just wanted to bring you guys in just a little bit, and I'm not going to do the entire face, but I'm just going to lightly kind of tap it around this whole area here. I'm so glad I waited to do this part with you guys on camera. The only thing is I will have to rebronze my nose because obviously she's looking a little bit whiter than we would like. I'm going to tap a little bit of this up under my eye too. Yes. All right, so I'm not going to lie, guys. That touched up beautifully. Now, I am going to hit it with a little bit of bronzer and probably reset it with my Morphe Prep and Set, but I want to let this just soak in for one second before I disturb it too much. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll do all of that, and I'm going to keep wearing this to see how everything works for the rest of the day, and I'll probably stop back on in a few hours and let you know how everything goes. But I just wanted to stop on and do this portion with you guys so we could kind of see every facet. So far, the primer isn't bad, but it is causing a lot of movement. Movement. So we shall see. I mean, that was a little uncharacteristic for that foundation to move quite like that, but we're going to see. I'm going to give it till the end of the day, see how she looks, and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, you guys, so it is the end of the day, and I wanted to jump on here and go through some final thoughts of these products, and I have to be honest, they're a lot more positive than I thought they would be, so I definitely have some thoughts how I would wear it type situations, and we're going to dive into that. So the first thing is I'm not going to talk again on the moisturizer. I already went there. We went through her already. We know the 
T. However, next up, we're going to get into primers. I have a dog hair on my nose. I'm not going to lie. It's about ready to give me a heart attack. <laughs> but as I was saying, diving into primers. So as we know, this side had the balm on it. And then this one had the more hydrating liquidy primer. And I really like both sides. I'm actually pleasantly surprised that the balm side, it is still so freaking smooth over the planes of my face. And at this point, this foundation has been on for so long, you guys. Like we are talking, it's probably been on for nine plus hours and it looks so good over the planes of my face. And if I'm going to start breaking up because of a primer, typically it is over my more textured areas, which is again, like the planes of my face, the tops of my cheekbones, that whole area. And as you can see, both of those sides are still looking so nice around the chin, even up on the forehead is looking pretty good. The whole cardly ate anything today. Like it was a very successful run as far as the skin breakage is concerned. Now, if it were me and I were to use, I'll start with the balm primer. I would probably only put that primer on like the outskirts of my face. So like maybe the larger plane of my cheek up here a little bit on the side and maybe some on my chin, but I would still want something that isn't so thick in dimethicone up on like the pores of my nose because I did notice today as I was going throughout the day that my oils and the overall breakage I started to get right at the crook of my nose and along the curvature of it was a lot more intense than it usually is. And so for me, that's typically an indicator that my foundation is just moving around a lot more than it should be. But other than that, as far as on the balm side, I'm actually pretty impressed with the way that things wore and like overall the way that my foundation did sit on the skin. That's really nice. Now the hydrating side is a little bit different because I feel like it's not as minimized in this area of the face so much as this side is, but the hydrating side also feels very nice and plump. It doesn't feel dry, which is cool because lately, as I told you guys before, I've been drifting more toward the normal to oily spectrum and that's been giving me a lot more, dr not dryness, but almost the appearance of like dry or mattified texture on the perimeters of my face. And I feel like today trying out both of these primers, I don't have any of that, which is really cool because not only did I not have it through the first part of the day, but then I also didn't have it when I touched up. And again, if I'm going to get it, I would think after I apply more powder, I would look matte and or cakey and that didn't happen. So both primers, I think definitely did what they were supposed to do as far as the way that this one set down on the skin. Again, I would be mindful if you get like anywhere oily on your face, I would definitely be mindful of that because there was a lot of breakage in that area. So if you do have full on oily skin, I don't know that I would recommend this for you just for that reason. And I think that that's kind of what's going on here. Like I don't think that old school oily page would have loved either of these just because of that factor, like how they're breaking things up. So something to consider there. But I do think that if I were to do it going forward, I would want a different primer, maybe my Tatcha, again, something without so much dimethicone in it, going in the nose region just for that oil factor. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty impressed with the way that everything laid down on top of them. Now, the other thing I do want to throw out there is this powder that we were working with because I think this has a lot to do with everything that's going on. And I'm quite shocked with this powder because here's the thing. First of all, I used it to set my entire face, which we know, and I am really shocked because my face was set down. However, there's a big difference between setting my face with this powder and setting my face with like the Maybelline Fit Me. I noticed a big, big difference with that because the the Maybelline Fit Me, when I use that to set my face, it's a lot more finite. It's a lot thicker almost. And when I used this to set my face, it was almost like my face was set with less powder. Like this was so either fine or there was something about it that was just different in the way that it set my face. So I noticed that my oils did come through a little quicker. And like, even as I sit here right now, after I touched up this area of my face, it does feel a little bit tacky. Like I can feel that there's no more powder it's all been like compressed into oils and moisturizer and stuff, but it doesn't look thick and cakey. So as far as even this powder goes, I quite like it. I'm pretty impressed with the way that it set my foundation. It didn't add a ton of coverage through here, but I think that it did a beautiful job like evening out my complexion, making everything look nice. And if you do have my skin color, there might be a color there for you. Um, my biggest issue with this would be the shades that it was released in. I'm just not a fan of how they did the shades with this launch. I'm not a fan of this like whole coloring in general, unless the shades on the Ulta.com website are way off, which that has happened before because sometimes pictures are weird. So I don't know what that's all about. But as far as how this sat on my skin, I actually liked it. And it's a nice, fine enough powder that I could see this working for someone that has like 
normal to dry skin as well because it's so thin and finite that it doesn't go on really thick and cakey. You don't pick up too much of it when you go in with it, which is beautiful. A lot of times when you go in to like retouch your face, when you go in with anything, it's very robust and it, you notice it right away because look at that. Like that's not nothing, but it shears out so nicely that when I went in with this giant brush and when I first set my entire face, when you do this and you dap into it, you're picking up such a tiny amount of product like you can't even see it when I blow it off. That's how fine of a powder it is, but you are getting ever so slightly a nice veil of it. So guys, I guess the long and short of it is I like the powder. I will keep working with it. I'm super impressed that even after I touched up with it, I did go off of camera and I like bronzed my nose. So I was able to fix that whole situation. And I think what happened is in the directions with this, they actually said to use the enclosed, um, uh, not spatula, but the enclosed sponge with it to use that and apply it to your face. I don't think I would do that if you have a lot of oily skin because this is a very, very fine feeling powder. And I think what happens is the uh, that sponge that you're using, because it's dry, it picked up a lot of it and it just like deposited it to the nose. But because that's where my oil was, it just like stuck to it. And I didn't want to take the chance of blotting first because like I said, it would slough off and take my makeup with it. Because the dimethicone that was underneath of it from this prime I think was just making my foundation move a little bit. So if I were to do that whole thing again, I would still use this to touch up because I think it would be a nice powder for that. Again, it's nice, thin, lightweight kind of feeling powder. I would just probably not have that primer on my nose. So I'd be able to actually blot off my face and then go in with a tiny little layer of this. And I think it would make a huge difference. But I did really enjoy this. And overall, I think from everything I'm feeling and seeing right now, I quite enjoyed my face all day today. Everything looked really well everything set down very well and as i change lighting like from here to out there to outside i did notice that in every lighting pretty much universally this right cheekbone and all of this area like right in here all the way down to the nose does look more textured and a little bit more emphasized than this side which makes me lean a little more towards the balm but i'm also normal to oily skin so the hydrating one is probably not going to do as much on my skin as it would for someone with normal to dry skin so there's a lot of little factors that you can take into consideration, but overall, everything but the moisture today worked out pretty well, so I'm pretty happy about that. And I want to know from you guys, have you tried these? What do you think? These were so hyped and requested from you all, so I'm pretty excited. And I think, if I don't miss my guess, I'm actually going to be putting this video up on Monday instead of the uh, vlog. And I just wanted to let you guys know, I'm not not doing the vlogs anymore. I'm just kind of putting them off for a little while because I want, I have so much makeup content that I need to get out to you and you guys want to see it and there's so many new products dropping and I want to use that slot that can go towards more of your guys's favorite videos and my favorite videos so I just want to make sure I can keep using all five days to rotate all the makeup but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do them again someday I just I want right now to really focus on the makeup because it's like I'm getting so many requests from you guys and I can't keep up so I need to keep up on what's really important to most of you which is that so all of you guys are still going to keep getting content obviously but I just want to make sure that you guys know um I didn't touch on that, I don't think, at the beginning of the video. So I wanted to make sure that I could. And that is it for today's video, you guys. Leave me all of your thoughts and comments down below. Now, I know that I talked to you guys in the Dior video about an update video I will be doing in like a week or two about that. And I will try to remember to put all of this tart stuff, especially this tart powder, in that update video because this is definitely something I want to stay up on because I'm very curious as to how this is going to work with my other foundations and combinations and stuff. So anyways, all of that is going to be happening let me know down below if that's what you want to see in that uh, product update. <laughs> now, let me know down below if you want to see that in the product update video, if there is any other product or something that's being released that you guys are super curious about. I know a ton of you have said the Morphe foundation, which, bitch, you can bet your ass that foundation, that concealer, girl, it's going to happen. I'm so woo -woo excited about that. So, anyways, I'm excited. Can you tell? Guys, I love the trajectory of the channel. You guys have been growing and being so awesome. And just thank you for being here and being so fabulous. Now, you can also check me out on my other social medias. Those are listed in the description if you want to. If you're like, bitch, I don't see enough of you on this YouTube channel. I want to see you somewhere else. I want to see you outside of this little box of the U of Tube. I want to see you elsewhere. Girl, I'm going to tell you, first of all, you should be checking Instagram because that is where I do all the stuff. I talk. I do Insta stories. I hang out with y'all. It's a good, fun, fresh lit time over there. I love it. And so you can definitely follow me over there. You can follow me on Twitter. I talk to you guys on Twitter. I share stuff. We hang out. It's a fun time. And if you haven't yet, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hi, hello is where you are right now.
Do you love me? Do you want to see more? Because, girl, I put up new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays. They go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m., and we have all kinds of crazy, fun-ass makeup content. We have love it, hate it, favorite, product empties, product fails, new shit all the time, foundation reviews, palettes, like you guys name it. It is happening all the time. I don't like to limit myself to just one type of video, and I don't think you guys like it either. So we are just doing all kinds of stuff over here, and I'd love it if you join us and hang out. So anyways, that is it, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching, and please do not forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs> Was that exit, like, really fast? Anybody else? Thanks for having a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> no, Paige, you need to just, like, calm down. You need to calm down, and then you need to calm down tomorrow. See what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie, guys. I ate an ice cream cone, and I'm, like, really excited about it. It was delicious. McDonald's has, like, the best ice cream cones ever, and they're not super fattening, and I might have eaten one, and it was really good. There are two primers, a moisturizer, um, the shape tape, which is, oh my god, blah, 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 blah. Tarte's releasing some snoo, some snoo, some snoo sniff, 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 is like my go-to favorite, but I will say that, um, no, but, but if you do have dryer, I swear there was just something on my mouth. And then from there, it just goes into more about the study, the people yet that you yet used it. Once you feel this formula, for, formula, it helps make last up, make, make last up, okay. It helps make Mac, Mac up, Paige, come on now. Hello everybody, welcome back to my everybody, everybody rock your body right. Uh, 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 back streets back, all right. <laughs> okay, no, stop.